So we've generated a collection of data-driven baseline test cases from the add user object in Lisa Bank using 10 transactions to generate the test cases with. We've taken a look at the artifacts that are created with the different data-driven test cases we've created. And now let's take a look at executing these test cases. So right now I have open the data-driven project and I have the data-driven test steps test case open. And this one is a single test step that uses a data set to go through and generate the 10 users. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and execute this in the ITR to make sure it's actually going to run properly. And as you can see, we didn't even really get past the first step without an error. And it looks like it's going to continue to have errors as we go through. So let's go ahead and stop it. So if we go into the first item here, we can take a look and see what happened here that went wrong. So we look at the assertion it fired. We've got some differences between the expected result and the actual result. And we've seen this also with the expanded baseline test cases where typically this is the ID that's causing the problem. So what we can do is we can go ahead and step through this test case go ahead and test and keep the first row then we'll open up the step and we'll execute it we can see we got a good response there we'll go to the assertion and we'll go ahead and run the text diff viewer drag this out here right click format read only text and we can see that it is the IDs that are causing the issue because no matter what, Lisa Bank is always going to generate a unique ID in these situations. So basically what we want to do is ignore these and we can right click on them and choose ignore and right click again and choose ignore. So now that we've ignored the nodes, we can go look at the settings. We can see the ignored nodes and if we also look at the project config, we have the graphical diff viewer settings as a property in here and we can look at edit the XML diff options and those ignored nodes actually go into the project config which means that they're global to the project so any of the test cases we run will use those ignored nodes configuration so we can run the remaining test cases and it will ignore those nodes as well so with the diff viewer updated with the ignored nodes let's go ahead and run this in the ITR again Go ahead and clear out the old session there. Start running it and I'll go ahead and pause it while it's running. Okay, the test case has finished executing the ITR. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And we can see that all of the add user transactions were, the users were successfully added and it went ahead and it verified that the expected response matched the actual response and everything is good. So this test case is ready to use. So we'll go ahead and close this one down and we'll take a look at the next one. So the transaction steps test case here, instead of using the test step, is using a transaction frame step, uses the agent instead of the simulator server to invoke the system under test. So it's using the same data and it's doing the same comparison. So right now we should be okay with those ignored nodes in there. So let's see how this one runs. I'll go ahead and start execution the ITR and I'll pause it and now the test run is complete and we can see that all the transaction frames have executed successfully so the add user object is working appropriately it's validated that everything's working appropriately and this test case is also good to go so we'll go ahead and close this one down now we can go ahead and open the test steps template test case and this is the test case where we brought in a template and that template is another test case that contained a delete user step that would allow us to create the add user object web service step that would go through create the 10 users and then this delete user step was also created from the same set of transactions so after the users are created instead of having to go back and manually remove everything from the system under test all the users you created this step will actually delete them for you. So let's go ahead and run this in the ITR and see how this one works out. Go ahead and hit start and then pause the recording. 
Okay, so we can see that the test is completed and we got through the 10 users that were added successfully. However, when we hit the delete user step, we ran into an error. So let's see if we can see what is there. We'll look at the test events. File name specified. does not exist or does not have read permission. So this is basically telling us that the data set used to drive this step is missing or the permissions aren't correct. So let's go ahead and take a look over in the data folder and we can open up the data set for the step as well. And saying there's an error occurred opening the data set file. So go ahead and open this up, take a look and we can see the file name here, LB delete baseline examples, very long name. Delete user ends in 914, 1407, 734. So we have this very long data set name and apparently and obviously it is not over here with the data. And the reason for this is that when this was imported part of the creation process the test that was selected was not in the same project where the baseline test case was saved to. So while it brought in the steps and inserted them into the test case, it did not go out and find the data set and bring it over as well. So the way we can remedy this is to right click on the data folder, choose import files, navigate out to the correct project, which I happen to be in right now. It came from the sandbox project. So I'll go to data and I will look for the correct data set and here it is a very very long name this is the correct data set I'll click on open and now we can see we have it in the data folder and if we open the data set now attached to the step it should be fine here we go now we can see the data is loaded so everything's good so at this point it looks like things should work so let's jump back to the ITR Let's reset this. And now we can try executing it again. And I'll go ahead and pause it while it's running. Okay, so we can see the add user objects are working correctly, but if we look, we can see the delete user step is also working. However, after it's doing the delete user, it's going back to the placeholder step, going back to the add user, back to the delete user, and we're winding up in a loop here. So let's take a look at why that's happening because what should be happening is it runs the add user object, then it runs the delete user, and then the test ends. So let's stop this. Okay, we can reset this. And then let's take a look at our test case. And we can see that the delete user step is actually looping back up to the template placeholder. So we're winding up in a loop. It executes and it goes back to the start. We want it to loop around to itself. So we'll click on the step in the next box here or field. Go ahead and choose the delete user step. Save the test case. And we can open this up in the ITR once again. Click Execute, and then I'll pause it while it's executing. Okay, so the test is completed now. And we can see from results that the Add User object worked. It added all 10 users, and then the Delete User object worked. It deleted all 10 users and verified they were deleted. So. At this point, the test case created with the template test case is also functioning properly, so it is good to go to be used as an actual test case for regression testing. So as you can see, when you create some baseline test cases using CACAI, you may have to make a few modifications on the other side, but once you get them going, they can run very successfully to help test your system, make sure bugs aren't introduced, and the regression testing goes successfully.